Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Jesus has it coming at him from all sides. Fasten your seatbelts and hold on to your hats because we are back in the Gospel of Mark. And the author wastes no time telling us what is going on in first century Palestine. You may remember the beginning of Jesus' ministry in Galilee when he proclaims in chapter 1, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, in today's text, not only are the religious elites saying Jesus is possessed by Satan, his own family thinks that he is out of his mind. The crowd is so boisterous, big, and needy that eating in Jesus' own home isn't an option. Jesus' family tries to restrain him. The scribes say Jesus is ruled by the ruler of the demons. As if family relationships weren't hard enough, Jesus calls into question the relationship of his own family, who is on the outside and who is on the inside. It's a huge theme in the Gospel of Mark, saying that those who do the will of God are his family. There's a lot going on in this story, positioned between Jesus' appointment of the 12 disciples and the very familiar parable of the sower. The story reveals a great deal about who Jesus is and what he has come to earth to do. Jesus declares who is kin to him and is explicit that he has come to bring about a whole new order of connections, loyalty, and power. From the beginning of his ministry in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus has been dealing with divided houses and divided kingdoms. In just three short chapters, he has already cast out demons, healed Peter's mother-in-law, cleansed a leopard, and caused a paralytic to walk. Well, the houses and the kingdoms of the people Jesus encounters are divided. Their lives are not their own. They live with an inner conflict and turmoil. They have been separated from their community and all that gave them security and identity. Their outer conditions of illness and paralysis and possession point to an inner conflict, the battle between health and disease, not only physically, but spiritually. Demons caused all sorts of problems in the days that Jesus walked this earth. They broke through human mental and physical defenses. Like thieves in the night, they stole in and inhabited the human psyche. And then they drained all human strength and personality they could find. And they took the very precious thing that a person has, his or herself. Some demons went crazy. Others went violent or gravely ill, and some even died. Dr. Brian Blunt, a New Testament scholar in in Mark, says, It's no wonder that exorcists in Jesus' day were in such high demand. In first century Palestine, there was a bull market on madness. That is one of the reasons why Jesus is so popular in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus is, as, as Dr. Blunt says, an exorcist extraordinaire, unquote. The battle and interior conflict has been around for centuries. Adam and Eve separated themselves from God and hid among the trees in the garden. When Israel wanted a king so it could be like other nations, they forgot that it had a unique calling to be different than other nations. And so it is through Israel, the people of God, that God will act for the benefit of all people. This division or, and inner conflict is a reality in today's world and in our lives. A marriage divided moves towards violence. A nation divided results in vitriolic politics and in the extreme civil war. 
An economy divided yields poverty and injustice. A community divided becomes individualism, or tribalism, prejudice, and violence. Humanity divided is all of these things on a global level. We all know what it's like to live divided lives. When your insides don't match up with your outsides, you're one person at work, at school, and a different person at home. You act one way around certain people and a different way with others. Life gets divided. Pretty soon, we are left with a bunch of pieces of our life. And it seems like we're forever trying to put these pieces of our lives together. Well, that's why the crowd has gathered around Jesus. That's why the religious leaders oppose him. That's why his family tries to restrain him. In their own way, each is trying to put the pieces of their life together, but they're struggling with it. Their life and their world are neither what they thought they were, nor what Jesus knows they can be. One reality is falling, and a new reality is rising. Jesus offers a different image of what life might look like. He reveals the divisions of our lives and the houses that can't stand and the crumbling of our kingdoms. The established rule for who is in and who is out don't apply anymore. Jesus comes to bind up the forces of evil and take over the house and all that is in it. And those who join him in fulfilling this divine mission they are his family, biological or not. And those who don't remain outsiders. Don't you think Jesus is a little pushy here? Don't you think he's a little offensive? He rebuffs his own family. He thumbs his nose in religious leadership. He compares himself to one who breaks into someone's home and ties up the owner and steals. Jesus! He offends the closest ones to him, those with great power to hurt him, and even I suspect there are some in the crowd as well. He comes to make it clear that our loyalty to God trumps all other loyalties, including the ones we long held sacred. He tells the nice, respected, revered religious leaders that they're not only misguided, that they're instruments of evil. Jesus is offensive. He's offensive because he refuses to go along and to get along, to bow down to long-expected norms, to allow cultural or familial expectations to thwart his own mission, to bind up the brokenhearted and liberate those long captive. Sometimes... We don't want Jesus to cause such offense or ruffle so many feathers. But that's not who Jesus is, and that is not what Jesus does. He upends everything we thought was sacred. Family, religion, civility, established order, home, church, country. Jesus calls us to give up all the loyalties that in comparison to God should be penultimate. But in practice, in reality, become our working idols that drive our decisions and thoughts and actions. Things like anger and resentment, greed, insecurity, perfectionism, envy, guilt, loneliness, there are all sorts of forces, things, events, and sometimes even people by which our lives are broken and through which we are separated from God and others and ourselves. Well, Jesus, the leper-touching, demon-tossing, scribe-deflating Jesus challenges all our expectations about how God's Messiah is supposed to behave. 
In the process, he can be an embarrassment, even to those of us who claim to love him. We can wrestle with him. We can argue with him. We can struggle to understand him and even you know, pretend we don't know him. But the one thing we can't do is confuse him with Satan. So in a moment, we'll come to this table for the sacrament of communion, a place where those who are broken in body and mind or spirit find wholeness again, a place where the families divided by old or new hurts find healing, the fragment of bread that brings nourishment to our sin-sick souls. The cup of blessing which reminds us that we are never too far away, too out of reach, that the God of love and compassion cannot find us. So for those of you who have been hurt by a church of your past, for those of you who have been hurt for who you are or what you believe or who you love, May you know that the God of love and forgiveness will offer a rainbow of hope. And that same God will meet you here, at this table, at a table of grace, and will make all things new. Today and always, Jesus is stronger than any of the fragments our lives seem to be in these days. Jesus binds up the forces that divide. He heals the wounds that separate and refashions the pieces into something new and wonderful. That there is nothing about your life or my life that cannot be put back together again with the love of God in Jesus Christ. And for that, thanks be to God.